to another episode of Bobby Guy Films Foul Fridays. On today's episode, we will be covering the infamous white. Yes, that's right. We're going to be covering how you hunt in white, and not specifically how you hunt snow geese in white, but how you kill dark geese in white. This is a commonly asked question of how we do this. A lot of times in our hunting season, we do it a lot. It's a bunch of fun and it works wonderfully. I mean, it is awesome. It's one of the funnest hunts you'll have because it's just different. The birds work different. It's just different. So Canada's specs, anything dark other than snow, snows, snow, anything other than snows is what we're gonna be talking about today and not how you do it, but why it works so well. So uh, we're gonna dive into this. Like I said, most commonly asked question that I have right here so, let's get into it. So starting this deal off, first of all, I know there's a, some of you, maybe a lot of you out there that have done this and know that it's been around for quite some time, but uh, there is a bunch of you, and I mean a bunch of you, which is okay, it, it is quite okay, because this is different. And, and when you think about it, it's different enough that you th think, how's that work? So the initial primary reason why this works so well is because picture yourself being a goose. You're coming into a bright white spread. The sun's beating down on it, hopefully. Hopefully it's not cloudy. This works better when it's sunny. But sun's beating down on it and you are just blinded. It is literally so bright. The geese are somewhat blinded and when you lay on the ground, when you're stuffed in these decoys all around you, it just works. They can't see you. The second primary reason why this works so well is because imagine it being so bright off in the distance, you're flying, you're the goose, you know, just imagine, you're the goose looking over and seeing this white, white blob. You're automatically going to know it's snow geese, so you're going to go there. It's so bright it attracts attention from, you know, a section away or a half mile away. So if you set up trafficking, this works so well, and, and I'll be covering that in another video of uh, trafficking in white and why that works so well. But let's stick to the basics. Basic essentials, tools, number one, you're gonna need a white painter suit. Now, this is just a throwaway painter suit. Uh, you can get them at your local automotive stores, painter stores, wherever. Or you can go buy online or, or at your local outdoor outfitter store. You can buy actual white bibs. Uh, they are a hair warmer, so I do recommend them. Uh, these things wear out pretty easily and uh, tend to get torn and ripped really, really quickly. But these are throwaways, throwaways so they are like 10 bucks a piece, which is kind of pricey for how thin they are. Uh, they rip really easy and you go through them. Whereas the rubber bibs are around 50, 60 bucks, I believe, and they're gonna last you a long time as long as you don't rip them or break a strap or do something like that. The other reason I recommend buying the white bibs is that they're just a lot warmer. These things are thin, there's no material to them, and they are a lot warmer. You can only fit so much thick winter hunting gear underneath these things, especially if you don't get the really big ones and you're a six foot or more taller guy like I am, uh, you can you can really get tight in these suckers and, and when they get tight they rip. So if you can afford this 50 or 60 bucks, I recommend doing that. Tip and tools needed number two is this is just my recommended amounts. This is, this is what I'm gonna tell you I know would work at the, at the most minimal low cost uh, output is you're gonna need roughly five dozen full body snow decoys and th th like I said that's a recommended number do what you can anything's gonna work so you c it's always worth trying and as far as decoys the second is you're gonna need about 300 wind socks now you can buy I think they come in 150 bags usually is what we get 150 counts uh, you can run the 150s if you see that it's just not enough, not enough action, you're not, you're not able to blind two or three guys up with that amount, you're going to need some more. So 300 uh, wind socks, five dozen snows, and you should be in the field. Uh, hopefully you have some dark geese to put with this. You, yes, you do run dark geese with this white spread, and uh, let me tell you it works good. But we'll be getting to that here in just one second. 
So fourth tip, I, uh, I recommend when you do this, you're going to obviously be laying flat, laying flat on the ground. You're not going to be in a layout blind or anything like that. So I recommend you using your, your hunting bag, your backpack, whatever it is, prop it up underneath you so you're not laying flat on the ground and shooting at the sky because that is hard on the back. It's hard to sit up fast and it's kind of dangerous actually. When you don't have a decent posture and a, and a decent lean to you at all, it's actually kind of dangerous with gun handling I've seen. So make sure you prop yourself up. So following up that being propped up for my fourth tip, yeah, fourth tip, I recommend spending the little bit of money. I think it's 50, 80 bucks. I'm not sure, I haven't looked them up, but it should be right around there. What is called a goose chair. These are really slim recliners that right here, they well, right here, yeah. They're like this, you sit here, you lay back here, and on this, this is spring-loaded. It has two big springs on both sides, and when you lay back, when you wanna get up and shoot, you just like jerk it, and it, and it really flings you forward. So, extremely, it, it helps out with, with safety, with comfort, and you're gonna shoot way better out of, out of this thing. So if you can afford the goose chair, I do recommend these. They are luxurious. Fifth tip, oh, sorry, fifth tip, uh, and tools needed. So like I said, what we would be getting to was you're going to need dark geese, Canada specs, whatever they are, full bodies to fill in with this spread. So my first recommendation with doing this, if you have five, ten dozen of them, great. Don't intermingle them too much. So if this is my white spread, don't start, don't put them all together. Don't. If you look at how whites, how snows and darks feed together, they are completely separate. They're, they're essentially together, but they're separate. They're not, they're not really intermingled very well. So keep them separate. Check out this photo right here. It's an aerial view. And what it shows is our U-shaped spread that we always use 95% of the time with hunting this way, you'll see how we set the darks on the inner edge of the U. But this tactic with hunting dark geese works extremely well in windy conditions. Uh, when you have those socks out, and if your full bodies are on stands, man, you're gonna have a lot of motion. So motion is key, I always stress wind. Uh, if you go watch my recent Foul Friday, I stress wind and I teach you how to use wind in your advantage with your spread. So check that out. But if you go on one of these hunts for the first time, you're going to see what I mean by when I, at the beginning of the video, when I said it's just different. It is. The birds act different. Uh, a lot of times, man, they decoy so well. And, and so many small groups, especially if you're tra trafficking, it gets fun really quick. And uh, it's produced literally some of the best hunts I've been on in my life. So uh, if you can do this, it's, it's, it's like a new hobby in the game. <laughs> when, when waterfowl is your hobby, this is like a refresher. So I recommend trying it, guys. But like I said, this is just the basics of the how-tos to do this. There are so many different intricates to learn with this. If you guys have any questions at all about this, stuff that I might have missed or stuff that just popped in your head and you're like, well, what about this? Well, how is this different? Put them down in the comments. I, I literally respond to every single comment, so put them down there. I would love to make another video on one if the question is legit. So now that we're done with the basics, leave your comments, but I wanted to show you guys one thing. Check this out. Oh, it's what I wanted, man. This is sweet. I, these are the new shirts I got in. These are not for sale yet, unfortunately. I just feel like I'm not at that point yet. And uh, if you guys like these, let me know in the comments. Tell me you like them. Tell me you'd you know, be interested in buying one in the future or now. And uh, that might propel me to getting to that point a little quicker if you guys are interested. So let me know. But if you guys are interested in getting your own logo design for your own brand or whatever you're going to do, or t-shirts, hoodies, hats, whatever you're wanting, go hit up my boy, Moose's Workshop One. Check him out on Instagram right here. Go give him a shout. Let him know what you want, and he will come up with exactly what you're wanting, but probably better. That's what he did for me, man. He freaking amazed me. So go out. Tell your cousins. Tell your mama. 
Tell your daddy. Tell your Uncle Earl that we'll be out here hunting and making how-tos, teaching you guys the basics. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Have a good one. Peace. Oh, yeah, don't take life so seriously.